You know, in the usual feature facing outward. You know?
So this is, uh, as Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, entering into the uh, science of Krishna consciousness and my relationship with Sri Krishna. As Srila Gurudev writes in his Braj Mandala Parikrama, this is the place of Srimati Radhika's in-laws, Jatila, her mother-in-law, her sister-in-law, Kutila, and her supposed husband, so-called husband, Abhimanyu. On the order of Purnamasa Yogamaya, Rishabhana Maharaj gave his beautiful daughter, Srimati Radhika, to Abhimanyu in marriage. But, under the influence of Yogamaya, he wasn't even able to touch her shadow. He was always kept very busily engaged in taking care of the cows, going to mature to purchase cows, and he was always very ashamed to be near her. And although he would abuse her sometimes if he thought that she was with Krishna. And Kutila and Jotila were always engaged in their household affairs. So this gave the Sakis an opportunity to arrange so many secret meetings of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. Rajmandala Parikrama book describes that Srimati Radhika is the Ladini Shakti, the intrinsic, complete power or energy of Sri Krishna. As the sun and its power to burn, as the uh, light and fire are inseparable, as water and its wetness are inseparable, Similarly, Sri Sri Krishna and Radha, his power, his supreme energy, are inseparable. They are one soul who has come into two bodies in order to enjoy in their pastimes. And Abhimanyu is compared by Srila Gurudev with Ravana, who, although apparently kidnapped Sita, only kidnapped the shadow of Sita. He was never able to touch the real Sita, and this is compared with the relationship of Srimati Radhika and Abhimanyu. There are two very uh, beautiful pastimes that I'll try to relate along with picture. This is the um, picture done under Shula Gurde's guidance, detail for detail, of Prem Samput or the love locket, Srimati Radhika herself is praying some put, the container or treasure chest of love. And this pastime took place in Yavit. Her in-laws were out of station one morning, very early in the morning as you can see. And Sri Krishna, disguised as a demigoddess from heaven, came as a very beautiful uh, demigoddess, wearing pink, and his body covered with his beautiful sari, he came very slowly walking into the courtyard in Yavit. <coughs> Radharani immediately sent Lalita and Vishaka to find out who she is and what is the reason that she came. <coughs> Radharani and her sakis were instantly overwhelmed with this demigoddess's beauty. So Lalita and Vishaka went over to find out who she is, but she didn't say a word. This demigoddess didn't say a word, simply covered her head. So then Radharani thought, I should go over myself and find out. So she got up, walked over and asked Krishna, Who are you? I've never seen one so dazzling. In fact, now my courtyard in Yavik looks like brilliant, brilliant sapphires, millions of sapphires because of your luster. Please tell me who you are and what is the purpose of your coming here. But that so-called demigoddess didn't say a word. So the Sakis gave them a seat together and uh, Radharani kept inquiring, you look so sad, what is the problem? Do you have some disease? Or maybe, uh, maybe you're married to someone who just abuses you and tortures you and doesn't like you. Or maybe you're married to someone, but you actually have another lover. And this is leaving you in perplexity. The lover that you want is unattainable, and the man that you're married to is 
unpalatable. Or maybe your husband has another lover and she's abusing you. Or maybe you committed some offense. Or maybe your husband committed some offense. So asking and asking, still there's no answer. Then Radharani said, well, maybe you have some disease. I know, I have some oil, Narayan oil, that was given to me by my father, Rishabhanu Maharaj. Oh, Lalite, oh, Vishake, go and get that oil. And I'm going to personally put this oil on your head, and that will immediately relieve you of all distress and all sadness and any ailment that you might have. And if it doesn't, then I have a special other medicine. You can consider this oil, not as oil, but as the love of my own father. And I'm going to personally take care of you. Still, no answer. Then finally, after inquiring and inquiring, now the so-called demigoddess replies, Actually, Radhika, I have some doubt in my heart. And you're the only one who can destroy this doubt. I'm a damsel from Swarga, from heaven. And up in heaven, we heard this flute playing. And we didn't know where that flute playing came from. But by hearing that flute sound, all the demigoddesses, even sitting in the laps of their husbands, fainted and no longer wanted to be with their husbands. They only wanted to pursue where is the source of this sound. I myself became so curious that I left heaven and I came to this earth and I traced that sound all the way to Bhamsibad. And I personally sat on that Bhamsibad tree and I saw that as Krishna played his flute, you and all the other gopis assembled and Krishna began his Rasa Lila. And then I saw with my own eyes that's how I got to know you. That's how I got to know Vishaka and Lalita and all your gopi friends. Then I saw how you left the Rasa dance in Man and Krishna left after you. And then all the whole Rasa dance stopped. Everyone was left standing there, bewildered. I saw how Krishna came to you and decorated you in Shrinkar God. And then I saw how you told Krishna, Oh, Krishna, I'm so tired. If you want me to go anywhere with you, you'll have to carry me. And then, Krishna appeared to start taking you on his shoulder, and what happened? He left you. So he was with you just for a moment, and that cheater left. So therefore, I'm noticing that nobody has your beauty and your qualities and your pure love, of love. But I'm wondering, how is it that you're giving that pure, spotless love, that selfless love, to that Zabaji Krishna? He's supposed to meet with you sometimes, but I've seen with my own eyes how he's supposed to meet with you, but he ends up going and meeting with another gopi and leaves you weeping and then comes to you late. Just like uh, uh, Lohit Rudra. Sometimes with a little black spot, sometimes with a little red spot to make a purple rudra. Means he has the marks of different gopis on his body and he comes to you as though he's innocent. So I don't understand why you love him. This is my doubt. I think you should give him up. I've seen so much suffering in this world, but none of it's bothered me. But when I see your suffering, that's millions of times greater than any great suffering in this world, I can't tolerate it. On one hand, I can't bear to leave you, that's why I've come here. But on the other hand, I can't tolerate your suffering. So this is my great doubt. So Radharani tells this demigod, demigoddess disguised Krishna that there's something about you that is like Krishna in the sense that you have such an attractive power over me that I become just enamored by you. Actually, I should reject you because you're criticizing my Krishna. But somehow or other you have an attractive power over me that I can't leave you. And because of this attractive power that you have over me, 
I'm going to tell you something that I cannot tell anyone else. I'm going to tell you about my love locket, about the treasure chest of my love, so you can see what is its nature. No one can understand the nature of love, the nature of frame, unless you possess it. I can see you don't understand a thing about love. This love, called Swa Samveda Dasya, can only be understood by somebody who has it. It cannot be understood by mouth, it cannot be understood by eyes, it could only be understood by experience. Therefore I request you to become my Saki and live with me forever in Vrindavan. Don't go back to heaven, but always stay with me and gradually I'll train you in the art of praying. So this demigod disguised, demigoddess disguised Krishna said, Oh, you don't understand me at all. I, I didn't come here to be your Saki. I came here to surrender at your lotus feet. Please eternally accept me as your Dasi. Then Radharani began to describe her praying. What you describe as Krishna's faults, his restlessness, his unreliability, his thoughtlessness, his lack of chastity. The reason that you think that this is Krishna's fault is because you haven't got a drop of frame. Anyone who has frame knows that these are not Krishna's faults at all. These are Krishna's good qualities. And nobody has such qualities as Krishna. Neither Ram, nor Narayan, nor Nishringa, nor any incarnation has such qualities as Krishna that he is fully qualified to have so many gopi lovers. And if he didn't do these things, like leave me, apparently leave me for another gopi, I couldn't have attained these very high states of love, like Prem, Sneha, Man, Rav, Anurav, Bhav, Mahabhav, Rud, Adirud, Madanakya Mahabhav, in Modan and Moha, uh, Madan, I couldn't have attained these stage if Krishna didn't have these good qualities. When Krishna left me after Srinar Bhad, after he decorated me, and he left me, why was this? It was because I told Krishna, here we are, enjoying a lot. This is all Radharani in this very great place is explaining this to Krishna. I told Krishna, here we are enjoying alone, and my Sakis, who are as qualified as I am, they're qualified to be group leaders just like me, you taste like Lalita, Vishaka, Chitra, and others. They've given up all that to simply serve our pastimes. So how can I enjoy in this pastime with you without them? I want them to also be here to relish our pastimes. This was going on in my mind, Radharani is telling Krishna, Krishna, disguised as a demigoddess. And Krishna, Radharani is saying, Krishna was thinking, not of my gopis, but of the Vipaksha gopis, like Chandravali, Saivya, Bhajra, Palya. He was thinking of them, that if they come here and see us together alone, they'll become angry and envious, go home, and there won't be any Rasalila. And that's why Krishna left me, just for a moment. Why? Because they were thinking that their love is just as great as mine. And they had some pride. So Krishna wanted to destroy their pride so that they would appreciate and understand that I am the greatest lover of Krishna, that I am not different from Krishna due to my love for him. And thus, the Rasa dance will go on with that thinking. And he also wanted to please my mind, to satisfy my mind. He wanted to establish me as supreme. And that's why he left me, just for a very short time. Moreover, when he's with any other gopi, the only thing that he's thinking about is his previous pastimes with me. Then, the demigoddess disguised Krishna said, well, you say that you understand the mind of Krishna and that actually everything that you do like your display of mind is just to please Krishna and everything that Krishna does is to please you well, I don't believe it 
If it was the case that everything that Krishna does makes you happy, everything that Krishna does is your happiness, and then Gurudev quoted the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of Srimati Radhika said that if Krishna wants to give me ha unhappiness, that is my greatest happiness. If Krishna loves another gopi and that gopi is angry with Krishna, then I would go to her house, take her hand, and bring her to Krishna. Because if Krishna's happiness is to give me unhappiness, that is my greatest happiness. So now this demigod disguised Krishna told Radhika, I don't believe you. If you're happy with whatever Krishna does, because you understand his mind, as you say, then why were you weeping so bitterly when he left you after Sringar God? So she said, well, I can't help it. Because of Krishna's attractive power, <coughs> I'm overwhelmed by him. And in a moment, separation. <coughs> <coughs> प्राय कृष्ण आसें 
এইখানে ছিল একটি বদরের বৃক্ষ সেই কুলের গাছ কুলের গাছে বসে বসে কুহু কুহু আওয়াজ করতেন আবার এইখানে সারা রাত্রে তিনি বদরে বৃক্ষ ক্রোড়ে রাত্রির গমিস জামিস অর্থাৎ বদরে বৃক্ষ গড়েতে সারা রাত্রি অতিবাহিত করলেন বললেন যখন আওয়াজ দেন দরবাজায় টুক টুক করে একটু আওয়াজ দেন রাধারানী উঠে আসেন ঘর থেকে দরবাজা খুলতে যান হাতে চুড়িগুলি ঝনঝন করে বেজে উঠে 